Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our SFML series. So recall from a previous lesson that we had an animation like this. We learned about sprites, loading images, and even rendering fonts. So if you need a review on those, go ahead and check out the playlist so you can catch up to get to this point. Now, in this lesson, we're going to be talking about the animation here a little bit. Because if you remember, there was a little bit of a problem last time where we had to speed up or slow down our Mona Lisa image to see how fast it was moving. And this has to do with something known as frame rate. Or if you've played games, maybe you've heard this term, frames per second. How fast our application is actually updating the draw loop or, well, really the whole game loop that's running. So let's go ahead and dive in and see what we can do to fix this problem here so that we don't have to guess the speeds that we should move our objects. All right. So I've got a few things in front of me here, including the SFML documentation, which we're going to take a look at. But allow me to, again, just illustrate what the problem was with our Mona Lisa here. So again, if I look at our actual main application loop that's here, we decided that the right amount to move Mona Lisa was by 0 0.001. Now, of course, if we have different machines, maybe one's faster than the other, we might want to change this value. And in this lesson, I'm not going to be talking about frame independent movement, but rather frame capping, which will get us close enough to having a consistent application that will only update at what is sort of a magic number, 60 frames per second. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit. But let me go ahead and rerun this. And here you can clearly see it's running way too fast here. So we want to be able to limit how fast or otherwise delay our main game loop here. So when we're talking about frame rate, again, we're talking about frames per second. That is, if I have my main game loop here, and I have some condition at which it's running, and I'm doing my input, update, and finally rendering my scene, so these sort of main functions here in our game loop, we want to make sure that this happens 60 frames per second. Or in other words, that's 1000 milliseconds divided by 60, which equals, well, let's bring out my calculator here. 1000 divided by 60 every 16.16 .16 milliseconds. I should be getting an update or this loop should be running. And this is often how games or multimedia applications will budget or figure out how much work they can do within the main application loop. So can they crank up the graphics or add more objects or physics simulation? Well, as long as they're under this number, the answer is yes. Now, this number also varies if you're on a virtual reality where 90 or even 120 frames per second is the preferred, and some games also 30 is the uh, preferred number. So again, you could do 1000 milliseconds divided by 30, and that means you have to be updating your loop. Again, I'll just do the addition here, or excuse me, the uh, division. You get 33 0.33, etc. milliseconds. So a bigger budget to do work here, in other words. Now, again, this isn't going to cover what happens if we're actually rendering our application at, say, only 20 frames per second. Well, it is going to run a little bit slower, and there's ways to make sure that updates in your objects happen fast enough. Let's just go ahead and figure out how to cap our application at 60 frames per second so it moves a little bit more reasonable. Okay, now to introduce us to this, I want to go ahead and just look through the SFML documentation here so that we can see what tools we have. And we have one called clock here that's going to help us measure elapsed time. And we also have uh, in SFML the time class, which will also help us, and let me scroll down here to time, represent a time value, say, in seconds or milliseconds or whatever resolution we have. So I'm just going to show you one way that you can do this. Let me go back to the uh, clock example uh, here at the top of our code and just show you what's available. Now, uh, before I actually dive into the code, it's worth talking about just how to calculate frame rate. And basically, the idea is I want to figure out every loop how much time has advanced. So usually I need some way to keep track of the time here. And I'll just create a float here, for example, for the time. And then I need some other time, uh, say, at the bottom of my loop or whenever some work has been done here. So I'll just call this time 
two. And then I can figure out the elapsed time here by just doing time two minus, and I'll do this in a different color so you can see time one, and this will tell you how much time has elapsed. And depending on the resolution of that, if you're getting that in milliseconds or seconds or whatever, you do this same division step here to figure out how fast you are updating. So let's go ahead and dive into the code and figure out how we can compute uh, frames per second first and foremost. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna need to do, and I'll bring up the documentation here, is use our clock here. And I'm gonna go ahead and create this class here, and I'll just call it uh, clock here. And basically the idea is that this is going to take care of that step of measuring the elapsed time for us. So it's going to make things a little bit easy with these helper functions. Now there's a bunch of different ways that we can compute this, but I'm just going to show you the sort of SFML way using the SFML classes, because I'm assuming that's why you're here <laughs> to learn this library. So get elapsed time could be a helpful function here that returns the elapsed time since the last call to restart. Okay, so every time I call restart, I'm essentially getting some sort of elapsed time here, it looks like. So this is sort of the magic function or maybe the SFML way to do things here. You certainly could create two timers, which you'll see if I look under uh, restart here, it returns time, and do sort of a elapsed time computation. That would certainly be fine. But I'm going to take advantage of this here, this restart that just returns the elapsed time since the clock was started. So by default, when I construct my clock here, time has started or it's measuring something sort of like a stopwatch button that you're clicking. And then we get some result here. So let's go ahead and just start with that here. So I'm actually going to compute this at the start of my loop here. So compute the frame rate. And what I'm going to do is just get the current time. Now, how am I going to do that? So I'm going to need to do something with my clock here and do the restart. Um, as was uh, mentioned here. And this is returning a time object. So let's go ahead and just investigate that. And we can see that there's lots of different ways to work with time here. I'm actually just going to return that value as seconds here. That's going to be something most meaningful to us. Otherwise, it's unclear what this time object is. So when I do the restart, I get a time object. And I get as seconds here. And it's stored in, in a float. So I'm just going to create a float here, and this is the current time. And I'm computing this sort of at the top of my loop here, where I always know what the time is as soon as this loop has started here. Okay, now if I want to compute the frames per second, well, how do I do that? Well, I'm gonna need somehow to have some float, say frames per second, and some divisor here. If I'm getting this as seconds, I just, have 1.0 divided by, well, whatever the current time is here. So let's try that here. Current time. And let me go ahead and I'm just going to wrap this in parentheses here. So float divided by a float, say if five seconds have passed by, then it'll be running at, you know, some value here of you know, 0.2 FPS. Okay. So let's go ahead and just print this out here. And I'll put it frames per second, just so we have a little uh, printout. And I'll run this here once I fix the syntax errors. All right, so let's recompile, rerun. And we're going to see that this is running, in fact, at, well, it looks like thousands of frames per second uh, at this point here. OK, so now the question is, how do we limit this? again? 20 or 23,000 or so frames per second is too fast. It, it kind of hurts to watch. <laughs> so we need to be able to limit this. So the way that we do this in SFML, I'm going to go back to the documentation so you can see how I uh, learned this stuff is I'm going to look at our render window. And this is where we do our drawing here. So in render window, uh, let me go ahead and just scroll down here and save you a little bit of time here. And there's actually a function here called set frame rate limit here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And it limits the frame rate to a maximum fixed frequency. So let's go ahead and just explore that. And I'll make this a little bit bigger so we can see everything. And this gives us what it says a small delay after each call to display. Okay, so we are using display here. And let me go ahead and show you in the main loop here. 
So right after we do display here. Now this is at the very end of our game loop here, and it's essentially going to just put our program to sleep for a few seconds if we're running too fast, or a few milliseconds uh, in this case. So that's the idea. And we have a little bit of control of this as far as where the display function is called, that's where we'll actually get this delay. If you need a precise moment where you're going to insert that delay, again, you can move this function or just use timers and SFML has a delay function uh, built in. So anyway, let's go ahead and just try this function. And I'm going to go ahead and we don't need to set this everywhere in our loop. Uh, so for our window, which again, our window is here and it's a render window. We'll go ahead and uh, set frame rate limit, and let's try 60 frames per second. Now, if this is working, then we should see our frames per second calculation be close, maybe not exactly, but close to 60 frames per second. So I'll go ahead and run this. And now we can see, well, our frame rate is matching pretty close to 60 frames per second, and our Mona Lisa is moving much smoother because there's a delay and it's just not updating as fast. Now, what we're going to do is just go ahead and play around with some of these frame rates so you can see uh, the effect. So 20 frames per second, and go ahead and make a little prediction here. If I'm updating this loop slower, then, well, our animation should be moving, well, take a guess here, and to confirm, slower. It makes sense. We're updating fewer frames per second. Motion pictures usually use 24 frames per second historically. Uh, in today's technology, maybe faster, especially if it's an animated film or something. Uh, but I think you get the idea here. All right, folks. So now we have a frame limited application here, and it'll run at more reasonable speeds. You can make a little bit better educational uh, guesses as far as um, how fast your entities and your sprites and so on are moving, and we can measure frame rate. So I hope that was useful. Perhaps if folks want in a future lesson, comment below, we can talk about frame independent movement, which regardless of how fast our application is actually running, it'll still move smoothly like this. And there's a way to essentially compute how much time is running and divide all of your translations uh, by the time elapsed. That's essentially what it is, but I'm happy to show it. So if you'd like to see that lesson, go ahead and comment below, like and subscribe so you don't miss it if it comes out. And thank you for watching.